You're listening to Two Mics and a Guest, a podcast of people's stories and the career pathway that led them to where they are. And now your hosts, Michael Holliday and Mike Young. Welcome, everybody. Two Mics and a Guest, episode 22. I am Michael Holliday. Joined with me, as always, is Mr. Mike Young. You had to throw the mister in there, man, didn't you? I mean, you said to make me feel you old. are. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a sign <laughs> of respect. Oh, I am the old fart in this podcast, but it's always good to be here. Is it's that, exciting is that to be back. Dr- is that how I address you now? You too? can. Well, okay, you can well. do it. I'm, I owned it. I earned every one of those years. It makes me do that. And I'm all good with <laughs> it. It's just a number. I'm excited that Hope Woodard is with us today. Uh, Telehoma Zone. Yes. It's very exciting to have you. Appreciate you coming. I'm so excited to be here. I can't wait to chat and learn and listen and share stories. I'm excited. The, the, the Woodard children have come through Tullahoma. You are all well known. I know uh, Stone may be the best of all of y'all because he was friends with my daughter. Uh, but I've heard of you too. And I've been looking so far to this. You sent us our bio and I'm, I'm really excited about what's going on. So I am really excited too. Um, do you want me to start? Can I introduce myself? Absolutely. I was going to say a little bit about it, but won't you tell us what you're up to? Okay, great. Um, so I, my name is Hope Woodard. I'm living in New York city. Specifically, I live in Brooklyn. Um, which I guess is kind of the known as the hipster area mm-hmm. of New York. Um, I am currently a social media strategist. Um, and what else can I tell you? Uh, that's, I guess, a good, a good, that's a good starter. Me. I mean, yeah, yeah, we've been, I've been checking out the TikTok videos and everything yeah. else. There's a, lots of interesting stuff we're going to talk about on there. Uh, and I'm excited to hear about, I mean, you've been through, uh, kind of life pivots, right? You were yeah. you were headed to the Peace Corps. I want to yes. hear about that as well. Cool. Now, first, you were you were a high school kid here, graduated, went to UT Knoxville, correct? Yeah, yeah. And exactly. we're majoring in social work, right? Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, I was actually talking with, because my sister is in town with me right now. Okay. She's here up in New York with me. And we were talking last night about how I have had just like the most random ex- like after college experience mm-hmm. um, because so yeah, like you said, I studied social work. So I thought I was going to be sort of like changing the world <laughs> on the ground in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I joined the Peace Corps. I moved to West Africa to, to a small country called Benin in between Togo and Nigeria. Mm-hmm. I was there for 10 months. Um, there was a global pandemic mm. and <laughs> everybody I, we had didn't to hear come about home. that in home. We didn't know about that in Tullahoma. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it was like, it was in the news a little bit, might've caught it. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's totally like when you join the Peace Corps, it's a two year mm-hmm. commitment. Mm-hmm. So my two years was planned out after college. And, um, if it had gone as planned, I wouldn't have returned from the Peace Corps until last mm-hmm. August. Mm-hmm. And two years is a long time. Yeah. You know, it's like it can feel short, but that's a long amount of time. Um, so I got back from the Peace Corps completely unexpectedly. I uh, was trying to find a job in the middle of one of the biggest uh, <laughs> job market mm-hmm. crashes mm-hmm. ever. So that wasn't easy. Um, a friend of mine said, Hey, why don't you move to DC and stay with me and try to make it work? And so I did. And I, I had a pretty untraditional job. I was like an au pair or a nanny for Uh three families. Mm -hmm. So it was like a quasi preschool teacher, nanny thing. Three families. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know if there was a lot of this happening in Tullahoma, but in Washington, DC, these families were creating like pods. Oh, Okay. And so it was since people were like um, not really able to socialize with a bunch of people because COVID mm-hmm. was sort of rampant, yeah. there were three families and we all sort of signed this like social contract that we would only see each other gotcha. for the full year. So it was like 2020, like July 2020 through July 2021. Wow. We really only saw each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, quite an experience. <laughs> like, <laughs> Small circle. Well, yeah, I mean, the was, necessity there, I mean, obviously, we were all negotiating some kind of territory. We didn't know what to do. And and exactly. I, my daughter has a new baby and I was, I, but she did not at that time, right? Uh, he's mm. a year old now. 
But at the time when childcare goes away, when school goes away, when people are trying to figure out what to do, that seems like a pretty interesting way to deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. Because they still wanted their kids to be able to socialize. I think that was like a concern across the board mm-hmm. for a lot of families, yeah, especially absolutely. with young kids where socialization is like so important. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it was just a way to try to keep things as safe as possible. Mm-hmm. I was tested like once a month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, uh, you got those really good tests see. too, way up in oh, the, yeah. you got them good my, f- <laughs> my first test, because um, when I first came back, I was working for Ray Noes. Uh-huh. I was like living in Tullahoma and right. helping Ray with socials because he was running for mayor. Right, right. And um, I had to get tested because I had gone up to see my boyfriend who was in New York mm-hmm. and cases were awful in New York at right, the time. Right. So I was so nervous. I got my first COVID test and I, uh, it was, it was so painful. I think that <laughs> it, I was like, yeah. Those I first I tests, I did have the one between the eyeballs one and that Ooh. one. Yes, yes. I just exactly. had like a sneeze reflex. So the entire time I was like, I'm about to sneeze, I'm about to sneeze, I'm about to sneeze. And I, as soon as they pulled it out, I was just like, oh man, I feel like. It's so brutal. Yes. I'm so happy that there was some progress made. <laughs> yeah. and we learned that you do not have to go, like you said, all the exactly. way up to the eyeballs. Exactly. Yeah. I did have the eyeball yeah. one and did it. My, my son-in-law is a doctor and he was saying, okay, we've changed that now. You don't have to go up that far. But anyway. Good. Yeah. Now, wait, now. Now, I want to get, before we get away from yeah, Peace Corps. Yeah, I'm talking so much. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I want to hear about the Peace Corps, too, because okay. it's obviously a life-changing opportunity. Folks, I've talked to people that have been able to do that. Uh, yeah. You kind of set yourself up for two years. You you have to get in that mindset, right? And yeah. and to be in Africa, it's a little bit different than Tullahoma, too, as well. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of work were you going to be doing there? Or did you do for 10 months? I mean, you got got 10 months in. Yes. So the Peace Corps kind of has like three main pillars. It's like um, community, it's like health, agriculture, and teaching Mm -hmm. are their most popular, Mm -hmm. you know, sort of routes. And so I was technically a health volunteer, but also in the Peace Corps, you're there for two years for a reason, you know, because as much as an outsider wants to sort of like Mm -hmm. take um, stock of things that need to be done, you don't really know until right. you get there. So my host organization where I worked was the local health center. Mm-hmm. But I was like working in the school. I was like doing a girls club. I was helping with an English club. Um, Very cool. So my 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 literal role is being a health volunteer. But for most Peace Corps volunteers, I think you show up and you figure out what's needed <laughs> and you do that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if that mm-hmm. helps. Yeah. No, it sounds like a cool experience and and challenging. I love uh, a couple of gigs ago. I traveled a good bit, and you're right. You 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 just can't possibly really immerse yourself in a culture. Uh, I, past life, I used to work with churches, and we did mission trips. And so many times, you would hear uh, the people come back and say. I got more out of it than they did, but they also didn't get a chance to really be immersed in it and Mm. know the culture. Yeah. And when you get to do that, it's, it's life changing for, for me as traveling. Yeah. I know it was Absolutely. No, absolutely. So, but it gets cut short and it's, it's, uh, it, I think that's an interesting thing to, to talk about as well. You said you're, you had two years planned out. Uh, mm-hmm. I've thought about that for students. Uh, their their whole lives have been planned out, right? For yeah. for twelve years through high school, then they go to college or they do something else. All of a sudden, you're thrown out there without a plan, and that's yeah. a big pivot, right? I mean, that's a big right. deal to try to figure out how to to deal with. How, now you had some contacts. You came back, worked with the campaigns and those kind of things. But how else did you deal with that pivot? I mean, it was a big life change. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, I think that most people are just adaptable, That's you true. know, and um, if you are like open to change and you're open to going with it, mm-hmm. you can land on your feet mm-hmm. for the most part, mm-hmm. not always. Um, but you just have to sort of like be open to rolling with it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's one thing that I really took from that moment in time is like, it's great to have an idea of what you want to do, but um, not holding too t- <laughs> not holding on too right. tight to that idea or that plan. Cause you just never ever know what could change. Um, 
Now, I don't so that, know. So that, I think, was the biggest lesson I no, learned. No, I yeah. think, guess, I'm guessing that your 10 months in Africa, uh, in those countries, the, the pace of life is a little bit different than the U.S. You mm-hmm. came That's back. That's actually so, yeah, of right? course. Um, that probably helped course. you with that adaptability that you're talking about, right? I mean. Well, it, that's probably true. I mean, I mean, joining the Peace Corps and uh, like throwing yourself into another culture, you do, you have to adapt right. or you will not be accepted. That's right, yep. um, And also, I think one of the benefits of the Peace Corps is you're completely alone as an American mm-hmm. in your village. And I think so often when Americans travel in, you know, for good reason, they have people they know with them. That's right. But when you're there, like fully by yourself, um, that opens up a whole nother world mm-hmm. and a whole nother experience. Um, like the closest American to me when I was living in the Peace Corps was a good like 15 mile bike wow. ride away. Wow. Mm-hmm. Bike ride is a key and, thing. Bike ride. Yeah, <laughs> That's ride. a key word in that. <laughs> you mean, yeah, you, you mean I. Uber yeah. in Africa. No. <laughs> right. No, you can in Ghana, but okay. not right. where I was. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. There are these things called Zimmy Johns, which are essentially motorcycle taxis. Oh. And um, that doesn't sound scary at all. Oh, yeah. That doesn't scary. Yeah, <laughs> My poor dad, my poor parents, you know, like just telling them stories. I'm sure oh, yeah. they were stressed. Hey, I remember um, I remember when you were first going to Africa because I was teaching at Telema High School. Okay. And I'm like maybe 30, 40 feet from your mom's classroom. And so yeah. she was coming in all the time like, oh, my gosh, I'm so stressed. She's moving to Africa. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And there's all I know. these like, How she, could I do she's got to get all these immunizations, immu- I can't talk, all these shots, yeah. immunization yeah. shots. And she's like, I don't, as a mom, like, I'm freaking out. It's and, uh, stressful. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, though, like, it's so easy to be scared of things like that. And sure. absolutely things can go wrong. Um, mm. But, like, I sort of think generally people are kind and want to take care of you and want to help you. That's like been my experience Mm -hmm. um, in life. And so people ask me all the time, like, did you feel safe while you were there? Mm. And I say like, I have never felt more safe. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I, in the Peace Corps, you have like a host family and I was very lucky and had a host family that like truly took me Mm -hmm. in. Um, and yeah, needed to know my whereabouts at almost all times nice. of the day. <laughs> no, I'm really, I'm really so. glad you said that because I think it's, uh, my, my daughter studied abroad. It was not in Africa, but it was in Ireland. That's not the same thing, but it was but still going scary. away. Right. I mean, it's yes. a thing. Uh-huh. My son is hoping to do that this summer, my youngest. And yeah. It's something I encourage, and it is yeah. scary as a parent. When you, I followed the plane, little plane thing across the ocean <laughs> when they're flying. That's yeah. what we do, right? Right. But yeah. I find in in the travels, I've done some traveling in in Liberia and in uh, Morocco and those wow. places. Yeah. And th- I had people saying, "Here's the the security risk for this country and all those kind mm-hmm. of things." Before I went, right. Yeah. But when I'm there, I found people, one, they, they're so hospitable. They want you to, they, they're so happy for you to be in their country. They want you yeah. to have a great experience. And, and yeah. for the most part, I did feel the same way you're ex- describing, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that they welcome you there and they're so happy for you to get to see their country. Sure. Sure. And I think that like, there's a bit of calculated risk in anything, right. sure, you know, right. and as long as you're like being safe and being aware, it's like, yeah, like you still for sure have to like, you know, be, um, you know, keep your eyes open, That's right. you know, That's right. so to speak. But um, no, like treat people with kindness and usually they'll, you know, give it right back. It has been my experience. Sure. It's, it was funny. We got pulled over in Morocco once for, and oh my was, gosh. A, a, the officer had a machine gun and all this stuff Yeah, asking about us. And the, the guy that was hosting us, uh, he could speak Arabic and French and was uh-huh. speaking to the officer and he found out we were from Tennessee and he stuck his head in the door and he said, Elvis Presley, like he, that's what he knew no. about Tennessee. It was fantastic. <laughs> uh, and it was just this great exchange, right? Cultural yeah. exchange. So anyway, I think, I, I, I think the awareness is obviously there. Uh, my daughter did live in a third world country in New Orleans for a little while when she was also in school. So there's another thing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I said that out loud, didn't I? I love New Orleans. <laughs> 
your, my bad. It's your, it's, your, okay. it's, your, it's your people. It's your place. You I love my people, too. Yeah. I love my people. That's uh, true. It is your people. Yeah, that's true. Um, oh, man. So, okay, you're back. You're you're working uh, as a nanny. Or what was the term you called it? What did you call it? An au pair. Okay. And yeah, which is like a little, it's like a little more intense than being a nanny. I think like I was with them like almost around the clock, you know, like I didn't live with them, but I was there, you know, five days a week all day. And I essentially just slept in my own house. And that was (laughs) right. So that's why I use the term au pair. Now, you say now as a social media media strategist. Now I've I've looked. Mm-hmm. I love your your TikTok channel. I love uh, what I've seen on it. A lot Thank of different you. themes that's going on with that. From I kind of summarized it in my mind as kind of twenty something life hacks kind of thing. Is yeah, of that's a good way to it. put it. Yep. Yeah. You know? You and, know, and, and, and um, observations too, like those kind of shower yeah. thought observations. That yeah. We don't always say out loud, but we're all thinking it. Like there's some really good stuff on there. That's really true. I appreciate it. You know, it happened like totally on accident. Mm. Um, I, you know, two years ago, people jumped on TikTok when right. the pandemic hit. And Jake Crabtree, another telehoma guy, right. was like, yes. you should totally just like get on here and put stuff out. Yeah. And I posted one thing because I was like dating. I was trying to date um, during a global pandemic, (laughs) living at home with my parents Mm -hmm. out of college. Mm -hmm. Just not the great, not great prospects, you know, right. And like made a joke about it. And it was, I guess, relatable to people. And uh, I just like kept doing that. Just like my Uh my experiences. And I think it's like, you know what they say? It's like the most personal is the most universal. That's right. That's right. And when you're able to tap into like your experience and be authentic and just share that in like an extremely authentic way. Um, people resonate with mm-hmm. it, so relatable. you know? And so that's kind of like, a, has been my formula up to this point. Mm-hmm. Um, is yeah. Like just trying to like, you know, put into words how I'm feeling about life and present it authentically. Mm-hmm. So no, that's I like think that's a, no, I think that's a real thing. I, the, the, the writers mm-hmm. that I, that I like to read, uh, the folks that I follow as far as podcasts and those things, they are very personal. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, 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 in a past life, I was a youth minister for a while and, and I, we used to joke about the hip, the, the 50 something year old people trying to be hip. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, sure. and it totally age, doesn't work. Aging and yeah. that totally doesn't work. Uh, right. but people see they're drawn to real. They're yeah. drawn to authentic. Yes. Exactly. What you're exactly. talking about. Exactly. You know, I, um, I'm taking the storytelling class right now. Oh, it's cool. a goal of mine to sort of like constantly be in a class. Mm-hmm. I, and I was, so I was at this party last night and I was talking to a kid who was still in college and I was like, do you have any hobbies? And he was like, no, I'm just sort of like in school. And I realized like, I didn't really have any hobbies either until I was out of school, mm-hmm. you know? And that's anyways, not my point. So in this storytelling class, there's a woman, she's in her late fifties, early sixties. Mm-hmm. And I think for women, it's like easy to feel like you matter less as you age. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a universal, like cultural feeling that women have. But she is like so bright and endearing and asks questions and is interested in everyone around her. And just is like um, so engaging. Mm -hmm. And I think kind of like you're saying, it's just like real authentic interest. Mm -hmm. And there's no need to like chase anything or try to be anything or like, try to fit some sort of um, mold, right. yeah. Narrative you know, mold, just like, yeah. exactly. It's like just being kind and authentic and interested in people around you. I think, um, I don't know, it makes you cool or whatever. I think, no, I agree with you. Yeah, exactly. I think whether it's TikTok or YouTubers or any sort mm-hmm. of these platforms yeah. where like you're saying, these people are real and are vulnerable and like their true self. I think that's why they're so successful is because so many people watch that and go, oh my gosh, there's someone else like me. Whereas traditional yes. media we've all consumed is someone acting. It's someone putting on, yes. right. you know, a, a character. No, that's so right. It's it's so comforting, especially for this generation to latch on to something because the world comes at you fast when yeah. the world is. In Ferris your, in Bueller your said that yeah, exactly. before you did. So yeah, I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but, but, but even more so now, like, 
Ferris no, I know. Ferris didn't have Instagram. He I mean, did not. <laughs> Ferris didn't he did have, not. Yeah. I know. No, I, I think know. you're exactly right. I mean, I think that's a big deal. It's interesting looking at, when you look at social media much, TikTok particularly, uh, all of it, you have these posts that are basically become memes in the, in the more negative sense of that. They all look alike. Mm. Yeah. It's mm. the same dance. It's no, the same, right? Really true. Yeah. But yeah. the authentic, the, uh, the, the more authentic posts, don't become a meme it, it, yeah. if that makes sense totally yep and i think it that's that is something that's uh, i do think you're doing that yeah. I, I, i'm Thank not just you. saying that because yeah. you're here i was bragging on your post well, while, uh, before we got the, online the one specific tiktok if i can bring it up the one where you Please. talk the, the one where you talk about everyone thinks they're going to move to new york city and it's going to be like sex in the city and you're going to yeah. find the financial guy <laughs> and then you're like yeah. and then it's more like girls where everything's right. like difficult i know and, that that one exactly. like I've never lived in New York City. I've never even visited New York City to be honest with you. And right. that one just paints such a vivid picture of okay, so this is real. This is someone's real life experience, and I bet so many New Yorkers can can uh, relate to that. And and in other big city, you know, right. uh, yeah. yeah. So that definitely was, that was one of my favorites. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, I think moving to any new city or any new place, you like sort of create this. Um, idea of what mm -hmm. an escape it's going to be and it's mm -hmm. so easy to think like oh I'm going to move somewhere new and my you know I'm going to leave these problems behind but what right. is the saying like your problems follow you wherever yeah. you go you know what <laughs> I mean right. grass so, isn't always greener yeah exactly and so you just you get to the place and then you realize like oh life is here too mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know I mean? no you bring um, up there was a so. post by it was an article in the Atlantic actually that um forgetting the guy's name, I'm reading his book now, but he talked, uh, almost a direct quote of what you said about, uh, there's a poem, who is the poet, I'm trying to think, mm -hmm. that uh, you travel across the ocean and you get off the boat at the time, is an old poem, and you find your same problems there, right? It's basically what yeah. you were talking about. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that it was an old poem and he's traveling across the ocean on a boat says this is a common problem that's been yes. around for a while, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and we tend to, to isn't Chase that so things. funny? Yep. It is. I love that about, about like um, just like parables and poetry and writing mm -hmm. and like even it's like these sort of universal issues that mm -hmm. have been talked about for hundreds of years. Like how right. is a problem that I see today and go through today something that was relatable to someone 500 years ago, right. you know, yep. but it's like the human experience. It's that. We're all living the same life. That's exactly it. Yep. That's exactly <laughs> it. Uh, well, no, the, I think the human experience is exactly what you're talking about. And again, when you talk about the, the, the particular uh, that we think is just us, uh, I see this with students all the time with their anxieties and the things they're looking at. What's my life going to be like? What am I going to do? Yeah. Uh, my goodness, we've all felt that, yep. right? And, yeah. And being able to articulate it out loud as you've done, I think is very helpful for folks. I very. Do. So. Well, I, yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you all like about sort of your listeners. Like are your average listeners like kids in high school, just it's, people from Tallahassee. It's a full range, I feel like, lately. I think yeah. it's a full range. Well, one thing we found is interesting on this is we have a pretty standard uh, conversation that we'd like to have. Again, your, your route from high school to where you are now. Mm -hmm. But the thing that we're finding is in the diversity of the stories, there's some common themes that pop up, yes. right? Uh -huh. And so it doesn't have to be a student that wants to be an engineer or wants to be a social media uh, consultant or those right. kind of things. They can mm -hmm. find some things to grab onto yep. all the way through. So it's been interesting. I think um, older folks, our adults, uh, we have that's who our subscribers are, right? Yeah. They yeah. love hearing these stories from the from everybody that's there. Yeah. For students. Uh, I first thought it was going to be let's let's you know kind of prescribe it's this informational. One. Yes, exactly. You yeah. want to be an engineer, so listen, listen. to this podcast. Yep, uh -huh. um, that's where our naiveness came into play. Is as we moved along, that evolved to where our right outlook changed greatly. Is it? Yeah, no, that's yeah. exactly right. And I also think it's also our different. Uh, let me. Let, I'll ask you about this because I think you've got a diverse. Uh, work life so far you're yeah. not that far out of college i understand old folks like me we, we went thought about career we thought about a lifetime right my dad yeah. worked for chevron oil company for 35 40 years right my brother right. retired from the same job he took when he got out of 
college, Mm -hmm. most students now recognize, one, not only that they're going to have multiple careers, they don't want a single career for their whole, that that's not anything that this generation wants to do. So you guys look at this differently than someone Mm -hmm. from my generation. That's just the facts. And so one of the things we love to talk about on this podcast, we've, it's come up several times. We don't really talk about, I'm trying not to talk about interests anymore. Uh, that's sort of the old, uh, way of looking at career. What are you interested in? Then you go get paid for that. Yeah. We start talking about agilities, right? Mm. We think about that in, uh, athletic terms sometimes, but or physical, physical fitness, but I'm talking about in being agile to be able to be open to different things. Like you talked about earlier and be able mm-hmm. to step into those roles and take advantage of opportunities uh, to make a living, right? We all have to make a living, mm-hmm. we all have to do mm-hmm. that. But I would really want students to have the confidence and the agility yep. <laughs> to be able to step into these different things and, and do that. It seems like you're doing that. Yeah, I will say, um, you know, I feel like, well, to go to your first point, it it is true that sort of the um, what a job looks like now is so different. Right. Even, you know, five years ago, 10 years right. ago. And also I think like um, things are so expensive now <laughs> that right. you no have to have kidding. a couple different jobs. <laughs> you know, true. it's yep. like true. It's And I couldn't talk about the economics. I don't even know the right wording. I just know that life is way too expensive for just one job usually. Yep. <laughs> so, I know my son is paying 1500 bucks a month for a rent in Knoxville, Tennessee for crazy. a really crappy apartment. <laughs> and crazy. it just is not a good apartment. Uh, exactly. And I can't imagine what it is in Brooklyn for you right now. But I mean, yeah. it's the economics is crazy. It absolutely right. is. And so um, I think that like, young people are doing it out of necessity, but are also doing it because we like have so much available to us, like the option of choice. We just kind of like can see everything that's out there, Mm -hmm. which can sometimes be overwhelming, but can also be really exciting. Um, And I would say like my advice to someone or a young person um, is to just like whatever you're interested in, always sort of shoot your shot essentially, Uh, you know? Right. And of course it's like such a cliche. You miss all the shots you don't take, but right now everyone can DM a CEO. Everyone (laughs) can DM anybody. Um, I like today I'm working on this project right now with my company that I work for. Um, we're, I'm trying to sort of, um, bring in some goodwill work with this one mm-hmm. piece that we're trying to sell. Mm-hmm. So we're selling this necklace. It's got like a honeybee on it. And I would love to like partner with a nonprofit mm-hmm. to give back to like the, a save the bees kind of cause. Right. And um, there's this one guy in New York who like makes local honey on different rooftops. And he's like a semi influencer and we have no connection whatsoever mm-hmm. at all. But I just sent him a DM and was like, would love to get connected. feel like this is a great project for you and for us. We got on a call this morning. I messaged him yesterday and immediately hit it off, you know? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And um, I just think that, like, especially kids from Tullahoma, it's like, it's so easy to feel like, oh, nothing's going on here. Like, I don't have, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not in Nashville. I'm not in New York. But it it doesn't even matter anymore. That's true. Because it's like everything is open to everyone, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And all it takes is just like sending people a message. Sorry, what did you say, Accessibility. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, exactly. No, that's exactly the word. It's so broad. Yes, Mm -hmm. exactly. Um, So I don't even know if I'm answering the question No, 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 you are. I think think you're bringing up a good point. Uh, (laughs) I just was talking with uh, just... We were talking yesterday with a, a, a teacher about uh-huh. um, communication and we we're talking about digital natives and, uh-huh. and that's an easy thing that we throw out for younger generation. They're digital natives. They've done it. But we're finding with students, sometimes they they don't even want to press send for the email, right? To communicate mm. and sort of self-isolating mm. in some ways. Yep. There's some issues mm-hmm. that they need to do. And so a big thing mm. that we're trying to talk about here at the Virtual Academy is Mm (laughs) self-advocacy to be able to Mm -hmm. step up and and speak for yourself in those situations. And I think it does tie in with what you're talking about, about just reaching out to that person and, Mm -hmm. and 
presenting yourself there mm-hmm. as a this mm-hmm. is an opportunity that I'm seeing. Yep. They can what worst thing is going to happen. They're going to tell you no. Yep. Exactly. Uh, right. Uh, uh, yeah. Or you might get a conversation out of it like you did. Right. Right. Yep. And and I feel right. like human communication is such a skill that is honed through practice and reputa- and repetition. And so it's That's one of those true. things where they could be digital natives, but until they've sent a few emails, until they've yeah. gotten a feedback that is answering their question or, or what they needed. Um, yes, they grew up with technology, but, but let's, ha- how do we hone how they use it efficiently? Yeah. And I think also it's like, get comfortable being bad at something yes. for a little while. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, like, yes. That's exactly right. You know, like the first DM, I'm sure if I went back and looked <laughs> at like the first when I, yeah. you know, I would be mortified. Yeah. I'm sure. Um, you're just never going to be good at something off the bat. Yeah. And I think where that anxiety, like this, like, oh, should I press send mentality comes from is like, what are they going to think? Yes. Am I saying the wrong thing? Yep. Uh, you know, what's exactly. going to happen? Is someone not going to think I'm cool? Whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like all that racing through your head. Um, but so that's like, yeah, would be my advice and kind of what you're saying. Like practice yes. and be bad at it. <laughs> well, How, you know what I mean? Exactly. Just, what you just mean. the other day I found an old, ex- I, I come from the photography and videography world. And yeah. so I, f- I told Mike I found an old external hard drive the other day and I was genuinely afraid <laughs> to plug it <laughs> to look at it. Oh my gosh. And I looked at some of those original like photo edits and I was like, did I even Ooh. know what a, f- a slider was yeah. in Lightroom? Like, did I even know how to like adjust <laughs> contract? This is awful. But totally. I, I was like, Mike, this is, I mean, but going back and looking at that was so also helpful because yes. even though that was so long ago, it's just like, this is where I came from. So now I can really appreciate mm-hmm. what I've learned through it. The, that practice and, and, and learning mm-hmm. and, and things like that. So I think it's, it's healthy to do that, but it is cringy. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, no, but I was listening to um, an interview with Johnny Greenwood, mm-hmm. the um, lead keyboardist for Radiohead. And right. now he's like sort of a film composer or mm-hmm. a film. Um, he's scoring films or whatever. Yes. And I think he just did one for, what is that movie called? Eye of the Dog, or oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this the name is besides of it. the point. Yep. My film, my film student, Anyways. my film student son will tell me when he okay, hears good. this. But anyway, but no, good. I've heard about. I need to see that movie. I did yep. not know he was doing the music. But. Okay, so yes, he did the music, and but I was listening to this interview, and when he first started playing for Radiohead, they were a big noise band, right? And they were like, they had this keyboardist, and they didn't like the keyboardist. So they fired him and Johnny Greenwood was like a friend of theirs. And they were like, Johnny, will you jump in and Mm -hmm. play keyboard for us? He agrees and had no idea how to play keyboard. (laughs) And he, Mm. on this live interview with Terry Gross, he's like talking about how the first like couple of months of playing keyboard, being a keyboardist for Radiohead, one of the biggest bands, (laughs) you know, Uh in the last however many years yes, he yeah. was he turned his keyboard off <laughs> <laughs> and i was like i can't stop thinking about it yes. like imposter syndrome is such a real thing that's absolutely you know? true that's absolutely and true and being like i don't i'm not allowed to exist in this space i yeah. don't have the right thing to say like i'm not supposed to be here i don't know how to do photoshop whatever yep. like mm-hmm. you know um Forget that, because yep. like just remember Johnny Greenwood. Now he's <laughs> yes. winning awards. And it's funny you say this. Music. It's funny you say that story. I heard, and I can't think of who it was at the time now, but I heard a the almost identical same story. And that yeah. person said, "I literally had to fake it until I made it." Yeah, like, and now look at where they are. And, <laughs> and it was just like I had to go learn it independently, but I got exactly. hired to do it, and it was just. No, I, I, I think, yeah. hope you said something that was interesting. It kind of triggered a little bit in me that was good in a good way. Uh, about I have the right to be here. I have the right to uh-huh. be in this space. And, and mm-hmm. some of the, the issues that we see with students constantly mm-hmm. is, uh, is that confidence, yep. right? Of, yeah. uh, and I think the advent of social media, one of the negative parts of it yeah. is they're now aware of the parties they weren't invited to. Yeah. They're now, totally. and we're, we also curate our best, what we feel like is our best selves. Yep. Mm-hmm. on social media right totally mm-hmm. and so the pressures that uh i was going to say a lot it, it's different with young girls and young young men obviously and young women and young mm-hmm. men um, mm-hmm. but it's still there 
that there's still this sure. thing. Uh, and I do think the confidence is a big deal yeah. to yeah. be able to say, I belong in this space. Yep. I liked you yeah. saying that. Yep. Gary Can you say anything about yeah. that? Gary Vaynerchuk has a big segment on that too, because he owns VaynerMedia in, in New York City. Mm-hmm. And he uh-huh. talks about how someone asked him, he goes and does speaking engagements, and he said, uh-huh. what's your advice for this younger generation that's coming up um, you know, in a technology mm-hmm. world, in this, in this space? And he said, uh, self-esteem. He said, if there's one thing in school that we're either not pushing enough is self-esteem. He said, there's so much stuff out there that we can learn because it's out there on the internet. So when it comes to information, information is so accessible that you can learn a lot of stuff on your own that yeah. you didn't used to be able to do, but self-esteem okay. and, and confidence and whatever word you want to put on it. He said, that's something that this generation needs because like you said, Mike, there can be some negative pitfalls of social media and, and, and how people can be keyboard warriors as it's been labeled. And it's, Jeez Louise. It's yeah. Tough. What I mean, you, these kids don't have it easy. Like, you know, like being in, I can't imagine. I was in, I was a freshman in high school when I just, when we found out Instagram existed <laughs> and right. we, I remember exactly where I was. I was like out, it was like near the tennis courts. Mm-hmm. Like we were outside for a gym class or something. And one kid had Instagram and we were like, <laughs> what is this? You know? And so I was like right on the cusp where like my life was not defined by social media mm-hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. until really, I think when I hit college and I think that's when it was sort of like really a part of everyone's life. Um, and it is a double-edged sword because it can create connection absolutely, and it can open you up to so many things that you would have never known about, um, beforehand. Right. Like, like I was talking with some older folks, people older than me about Spotify and Mm -hmm. they were like, you don't get it you didn't have to go into a record store and discover (laughs) the music, you know? And I'm like, okay, fair. But before I moved to West Africa, I was able to find like a very niche West African Mm. band that I then played for my host family while I was there. And they were shocked that I knew who it was, you know, and that brought us together. So they're double, it's like a double edged sword for sure. Um, So did you like, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I just wanted to bring it back to what you were saying to like creating confidence and creating right. self-esteem. Cause I was going to ask you where that uh, self-esteem pill is that we can take. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's yes. not one, right? Yep. The pill. Wow. I wish <laughs> <laughs> still today, you know, exactly. Like, let me say like, I do not have it figured out at all. And like everyone who you see online who like has any kind of following, like has their bad days for sure. sure. And Absolutely. it's like fighting the same, fighting the same thing. Right. It's a totally no, to your point. Like tradition. I was one of the posts that you, and I want you to elaborate on that, but one of the posts that I loved is your pep talk. You said, I've talked about toxic positivity, right? Yeah. About mm. Being real. It's okay to be sad. You talked about yeah. define your own version of success uh, yeah. and also always get advice. Right. Yeah. A lot of times we don't seek advice because we don't yeah. act like we don't know it. Like we exactly. want to, right. And it yeah. all comes back to this confidence and being, I, I belong in this space. I, I, mm-hmm. I can live here and I can be mm-hmm. here yep. and mm-hmm. having the confidence to say that. I'm, I don't know, riff on that a little bit, because I think that's a big deal. I see that in your posts. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not just this fake positivity. When we say fake it till we make it, that's not what we're talking about. No, no that, no. that right? doesn't mean, yes, that doesn't no. mean like, um, ignore like your feeling and your real experience exactly you know um but what i what i've been sort of thinking of as we've been talking about all of this is like one of my favorite pieces of advice is like nothing is ever about you (laughs) Mm -hmm. like if there is a party that you weren't invited to and you see it on instagram and you're like in high school and it Mm -hmm. hurts you like it's never honestly about you and that's like the hardest thing to like understand completely but everyone is so worried about themselves Mm -hmm. and their own ego and their own image it's like they don't even have enough space in their brain to think about how they're impacting other people you know and so like i think that was the biggest like I read Amy Poehler's memoir Mm -hmm. like going into college. Mm -hmm. And that was like one of her big things. It's like nothing is personal. And then I'm reading like the four agreements right now. And that's another one. Don't take anything personally. Um, Because like at the end of the day, as much as we hate sometimes to be empathetic and it's easier to say like, oh, that guy's just a jerk. 
something's going on to make somebody yep. treat you the way that they're treating you. Mm-hmm. And it's never about you, yeah, you right. usually, you know? Well, and sometimes we've, we've twisted that when we say it, it's not personal. Well, it's like it's given somebody an excuse to be a jerk or, you know. Yeah, uh, and that's true. But that's not, that's not what we're talking <laughs> that's about That's not what I mean. No, <laughs> no I, I didn't take it that way. I'm not hearing it that yeah. way. I'm, yeah. I'm saying that, uh, again, there's a, a acceptance of your humanity and who you are mm-hmm. that allows you to be able to say that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's one of the big roadblocks for even for old people like me, frankly, you know, there's some things that I'll write and they'll never show up on the blog. It'll never show up. Uh, when actually it might be the exact thing that needs to be put out there. Right. And we don't have the confidence to put ourselves out there sometimes. And so when we see rejection or something like that, it's, it, it really isn't about us. You know, I, I, right. I was talking to a bunch of middle schoolers uh, in Coffee County Middle School a few years ago. Um, I was with the Anti-Drug Coalition and we were talking, doing a typical talk at the school. And and one of the things we talked about is, you know, you see, every, you get in the mirror every morning and you're doing everything yeah. so that people will, you think everybody in middle school is going to look at me. They're going to think this is cool or not cool. And yeah. actually every middle schooler is looking in the window as they walk up the sidewalk to see what they look like. Correct. They're not looking right. at any of the other middle schoolers, right? They're right. looking at themselves to have the confidence just to be who you are in that space is a big deal. Um, yeah. And that helps with what we're talking about here. I know I'm rambling a little bit and want to no. run, but I think that's a, a thing. I do, do see that in your post and I appreciate it about your post. Yeah. It's, it's not an easy thing to tap into, but like when you can, it's, um, it's, yeah, it just, when you're like, sort of like making these decisions for yourself and like we said, doing things that are authentic to you, like, I don't know. And if people, if people reject it, like, just know that life is like not going to end there. You know what I mean? I think about when I would think about middle school and I think about high school and like, people say it all the time and it doesn't make that experience any easier, but to say sure. like, you're going to get out of this. <laughs> you yep. said that like, in one of your posts too. This is, you gonna, know, that might've been in that <laughs> uh, te- pep talk. It said, focus on you, focus on your yeah. path. This is all going to be over soon. This, this too <laughs> yeah, pass. exactly. Yeah, I loved what you said. You know? yep. I mean, there were moments in high school that were like tough. Don't get me wrong. Um, but just like, it's just not over here. You mean and the you drama kinda, of Tullahoma didn't like, yeah. <laughs> it didn't continue after you walked across the football field for not graduation. To, you know, like life still happens, <laughs> yeah. but you know, things just change and you know, and you, you get to go where you want to go. And the perspective, know? perspective. Cause it's the, your biggest thing in your life when you're in high school. But then years later, you're like, how did I, that's not like, that's not even anything to worry about. Like that was uh, maybe such a small, like, you know, now, occurrence. Yeah. Now we yeah, talked a exactly. little bit about, uh, I know there's going to be some folks that think what you're doing is unattainable. Like you didn't come out to yeah. be a TikTok influencer. That wasn't what your plan had happened. And then you've right. taken advantage of the opportunity. You are working with projects and those kind of things. What are, what are some things, uh, that maybe helped you? We've talked about the, your ability to look at opportunities and step into them. Uh, I don't know. What would you tell a high school kid right now? That's kind of going, how do, what do I do? How do I get out of here? How do I get out of here? Um, that's so funny. (laughs) Well, I think I've already sort of like touched on a few things, which is like, don't be afraid to be bad at something. That's right. You know, um, don't be afraid to reach out to people. Um, and I think that's something that I really value is like reaching out to people that I want to be like, Mm-hmm. Um, cause everyone, cause people may look at me and think, oh, I can't do that. Uh, there are plenty of people that I see and think, oh, I can't do that. But it's like, reach out to those people and learn from them mm-hmm. and figure out how they, how they did it. Mm-hmm. Um, that is my advice. And then to like foster those relationships and do the work, you know, yeah. Um, like kind of like, I feel like right now life is here for the taking for anybody, Mm -hmm. but you have to hustle. It's not, you know, 
I hate to say it's not going to be given to you because I don't want to sound no, no, like. No, no, I mean, I, 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 no, you're exactly right. We see, frankly, we're seeing that with school right now. I mean, we want to give you the credit. We don't give you the credit. You earn the credit, right? Yeah. You have to do right. the work. You have to do the work. It's exactly. Exactly. Uh, exactly. What it, now do you, are you, do you do gig work or are you working for a company right now? Is, how's that so work? I was like, great question. I did basically the gig thing for about two years out of college. Mm -hmm. So I like, like I said, I had a pretty non-traditional right. experience out of college. Um, and I think it's doable, but when I, I was so ready for a stable job yeah. when I, so right now I have like a nine to five mm -hmm. and it's awesome. Freelance you is know? tough. Yeah. Freelance <laughs> is tough. When you're your own. Like, Freelance whoa, is tough. It's tough. And I am like not that organized. If, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. I may be personable, but I'm not great with like <laughs> bills and saving tax money and that whole, mm -hmm. like the, that whole right, thing. Right. So I have a job now. I work for a jewelry company that's like a national jewelry company. Mm -hmm. and, um, I'm helping them with their socials and doing mm -hmm. content creation for them. I have some gigs on the side. I still do some like influencer work and I manage a couple of different socials. Like there's a music venue. I manage their socials mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. here in New York. And, you know, so I still love like the gig thing, but it's really, it's way easier to do the gig thing when you have like a stable mm -hmm. constant. Sure thing in your life mm -hmm. you know and, and speaking on the gig thing because mike's fantastic show notes i have here off to my side we've touched on comfort zones and now we're talking about gigs it says on here practicing stand-up comedy yes <laughs> will you please elaborate on how this interest came about how does one yeah. even enter into that space because new york city is a mecca for yeah. stand-up comedy i mean it's, absolutely it's a proving ground there's everything there like la's got the comedy store it's got great stuff out of LA. Totally. but new york city comics they say that's where you really cut your teeth Man, well, you know, it's easy to sign up for an open mic in the city <laughs> yeah. and mm -hmm. anyone can show up. You could literally be the least funny person in the world mm -hmm. and you can show up and go on for an open mic. And, bomb. and um, <laughs> yeah. I have always been interested in comedy and I've always like loved, like love comedians in cars getting coffee. Like I yeah. love Comedians, Are you doing like, the marvelous Miss Maisel? That's what I want to know too. Have oh man, <laughs> I have yes, it's great. It's so good. Right. And um, I think one day I kind of realized, like, uh, why am I not doing it? You right. know, mm -hmm. like, um, I think especially for women. And sorry to make this about a gender no, thing, but good. sometimes we think like, oh, we're just going to date a guy that does the thing that we want to do. Mm -hmm. And I think when I was like in high school, I said, I'm going to move to Chicago and date a funny guy because mm -hmm. that's where all the funniest guys go. Mm -hmm. And my sister's boyfriend was like, why don't you just do it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I did. it took me like four more years to realize like, yeah, why don't you just do it? Like if you're interested in something, just go for oh, it. Cool. Cause like what we're saying, at least that worst that can happen is that someone says no, someone doesn't think you're funny. Right. And the thing is, someone's not going to think you're funny. <laughs> yeah, like right. no matter what you exactly do, right. someone's yeah. not going to like give you a, a five star review. Yeah. Right. It's just a part of it. Everybody has critics. Yeah, exactly. So, but I don't want to take all the credit cause I signed up for this open mic and then I had a girlfriend who does comedy and I was like, I don't think I'm going to go. Like I can't do this, <laughs> you know? And she was like, you're going to go. I'm going to sign up. Let's do it together. So I had a friend who really grabbed my hand and pulled me in and made yeah. sure that I did it. And if it hadn't been for her, I probably never would have actually gone. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, you know, I don't know your comedy style, but I can only make an assumption. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But you, you touched on comedians and cars getting coffee. Jerry Seinfeld's probably one of the best observational style comedians yeah. out there. Like he sees things in society yeah. and that was what his standup was based on. And so your TikToks, there's so many of them that are hilarious because they're real life things, but you bring that comedy element to it on some of those that are just really funny. And I just yeah. wonder, is that kind of maybe your style when you, when you yeah, approach some of that? Yeah, for sure. It, for sure. And um, I think that there are a bunch of different styles of comedy. Sure. Um, yeah. I am really interested in the kind of comedy that like brings connection, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so there's some comedy that's like very crude oh, and... Right. It has its place, yep. <laughs> like, right. Right. you know, no hate to those people because it's a real That's art right. and it takes mm -hmm. creativity. Um, 
But I think like life is so dumb that you can laugh about it all <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah, dumb sure. in a good way. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I don't mean exactly what you mean. Um, it's like, yeah. And so that's what I'm trying to do right now is just like be sort of conscious of like life experiences, even when they're really hard and um, make them funny. And I don't know if you all like David Sedaris. I do. Mm-hmm. Love him. And I was like listening to, I did, um, what is it called? I don't know. I like sat through a couple of videos for this class. It's this like online. Oh, I'm totally blanking on the name. Anyways, David Sedaris was just talking all about how like your hardest experiences will be your funniest mm-hmm. material. Mm-hmm. And I think that's true. It takes a long time to process those experiences, yeah. but it's like, that's the right. formula. It's like, it's, it's like grief plus time equals comedy or whatever. I like that. I like that wow, equation. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, it helps you process things and it helps you. Um, so I'm, I'm just doing it like with a very light heart, you know? Yeah. And I think that's maybe another piece of advice that I would give people is do things because it's fun. Do things because you mm-hmm. like it. Do things because, um, you know, it's something to do. Like, it's just an experience. Like, I'm not tied to being famous or, like, right. being on, right. being in the comedy cellar. You know what I mean? That's, right. that's yeah. not really my goal. My no. goal is just kind of, like, to have a hobby and to have fun and surround myself with, like, funny, interesting yep. people. I think So that's kind of how I got into no, it. No, yeah. I think it's cool because I, I just finished reading uh, Mary Goche's book about uh, – her music and, and uh-huh. her songwriting process, but it was a similar thing. She signed up for an open mic. Yeah. Didn't want to go. In fact, yeah. did not even, she could not get the song out of her mouth the first time she mm. got up there. Completely didn't it, yeah. play, completely yep. drug off the stage and was humiliated. Mm-hmm. And she kept going back because there was a friend that had her go back. Just a very similar story to what you said. Uh, and just started putting it out there, started doing it. Mm-hmm. No interest mm-hmm. in being famous. We can be famous for a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that really fame is kind of easy these days yeah. with the, the way things uh-huh. are. And so yeah. uh, it, it's a goal, I yeah. guess. That's what I see mm-hmm. on a lot of the meme TikToks, frankly. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're they're getting the clicks and they're getting mm-hmm. famous on, on it. But there's something deeper than what you're talking about. And I, yeah. I appreciate what you're saying with that. Now, you talked about this storytelling thing. You go ahead and talk about this, but uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. No. I think it's interesting you putting yourself out there for the for the comic, the uh, stand up, and the storytelling. Uh, you're obviously telling stories on TikTok, but are you writing? Is that something you want to do? Is that you know? It's like I'm much better at talking than I am at writing, mm-hmm. and so that is something I'm working on. Mm-hmm. I just have a hard time putting aside time for it. Right. You know, right. hope's going to have her own podcast um, and Mike and I are both subscribers ahead of time. That's, yeah. that's all there is to it. We will subscribe to your podcast. We're there. Oh man. Well, I, I love what you guys love. I think like I love learning from people and I love getting everyone's take on life, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, because like at the end of the day, we're all just trying to like get through it right. and make it <laughs> right. and make it as bearable and even enjoyable at yeah. times right. as possible. You know, and so I just, um, that's, I think, sort of the thread that weaves all of these, like, interests together. is right. like, communication, storytelling, learning from people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, and bringing a little joy to life. Uh, the, the main reason I ask that is I've, I've had some writer friends that talk about doing improv classes or doing mm-hmm. those type things. And, yeah. and it doesn't have to be just done in written form. It, it helped a lot of these were speakers too that I'm yep. talking about and it gives you that opportunity to learn those things. And I, I think it's cool that you're putting yourself out there doing that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Now you may have asked this question, answered it already, but what would you tell young, uh, Tullahoma hope by the, uh, tennis courts that just <laughs> discovered, just discovered social, Instagram. Social media. Uh, what would you tell that uh, yeah. young woman? I think that what I would tell myself, and this is like the first thing, and coupled with all the advice that I've already that's given right, that's right. <laughs> over the last hour, um, is like put like put yourself out there, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, when I was 
in high school, there was always this like um, website that I always wanted to like send in a writing sample to or whatever. It was this thing called Rookie Mag. Mm -hmm. And if you watched the second season of Gossip Girl, it's the teacher character. Her name is Tevi Gevinson. Mm -hmm. And she started this magazine for young girls. And I was always like, oh, I wish I could do that. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything you say that's like, I wish I could do that. Do it. Yes. What is holding you back? Mm -hmm. Nothing. You know, it's like, yes, figure out a way to do it. And if you don't know how to do it, find someone who can and latch on to them and learn from them. Um, so, yeah, that's, I think, my biggest piece of advice is like, because you're going to say, because I think a lot of times kids are like, oh, they're not interested in anything. There's no way that's true. That's yeah. right. It's just maybe when you're thinking about this thing that you're interested in, you're thinking, oh, only that person can do it. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. Um, and so I would just challenge myself and like young kids, like if you find yourself saying, I wish I could do that. Or if you find yourself even sort of envious of someone, mm -hmm. figure out why and then figure out how you can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. We've had a previous guest who said something almost identical to that which is you know what is an interest what's something you really like and then ask yourself how do i go about making a living or making money from that or, or how do i go about that process and it's yeah like you said no one has no interest at all and yeah some, and some people's interests to some people can be quirky and and yeah. different but this is just such a, a, a big world that somebody somewhere out there is going to relate to your interest also no, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and it yes. also doesn't, and, and this is old dude too. Uh, I love woodworking. I attempted to sell some stuff. I had an order for about $4,000 worth of chairs. Kind of wow. a big deal, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I started trying to fulfill that order and it wasn't fun anymore. Yeah. It was no. all, all of a sudden my hobby was something different, right? Yeah. yeah. And it, we don't have to, we don't have to just market ourselves doing yeah, something you don't have that to you're monetize in, everything. That's right. Yeah. You got to make so a living. I yes, I agree. And I agree with that advice, like have an interest um, and go after it. I would even though say like, just be interested. Like, don't try to make money off of it at first. Like, mm -hmm. don't have any expectation of yourself right. other than to do it. Yep. That's all you have to do. Right. Like, check it off your list. Because like I said earlier, you're going to be bad. It's going to not work at first. It's gonna, <laughs> right. You know? Right. You might even lose money. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I just think it's important for us to do that. Again, it's that part yeah. of saying I have the right to exist, right? I have the right to mm. be here. I've, I've mm -hmm. been watching my son. They started a new chess club, and, and he really sucked at chess at first. Now he kills yeah. everybody that I, I love know. it. But yep. he just did it, right? And now they're having yeah. their crawfish ball this we, weekend in their so tournament. Fun. That's kind of cool. We can learn so much from failures, sometimes more yeah. than successes. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Well, I, I just think, uh, I appreciate what you're doing here. I like the, I like the, the spirit of it and it goes with everything you've been saying about, uh, even from the different comic, uh, styles that you talked about. Uh, it's just positive and it's something that, uh, but it, it's more than just that. It's not that toxic positivity you were talking about. It's real. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That's been my, uh, well, I won't go there. About to start. <laughs> That'll be for uh, I'm a, episode 23. Yeah, Michael. there's another topic. I might get on a roll there for a minute. Uh, anyway, but look, uh, anything else you want to share with our uh, crew that we haven't asked you about? No, you know, that's kind of, that's all my words of wisdom that I have for today. Um, yeah, you know, I love Tullahoma and it's easy to like want to get out of Tullahoma while you're there. Um Maybe, or at least that was my experience right. when I was in high school and in middle school. Um, maybe one other piece of advice uh, that I would say is like, just take advantage of that small community. Because I think small communities are um, looked over, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, there is a, there is a need for what I'm doing in New York City in every space. Okay. If you're interested in comedy, Start an open mic night mm -hmm. if you're a kid. You know, like what's yep. stopping you? Like everything you want to do somewhere else, just do it where you're at. Yeah. And you said you know? even too, you touched on it too, when you were living back here during the pandemic and everything, you were doing kind of the, some of the same things you're doing now, even yeah. here on this local scale, this local level. For sure. So. Right. For sure. 
because yeah, you're going to like do it and you'll make a big difference there. And then if you want it to take you somewhere else in the future, yep. it probably will, you know, goes back to Ferris Bueller, man. Life moves fast. <laughs> you got to be present where we are right now. And that's the thing that's, that, right. that's hard to do. That's right. I got to watch so, that movie today. So, I'm so going to put it on. So the message is skip school, everybody. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> <you know. laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, no, thank you so much for being no, part of this. We really thanks for having it. me, y'all. I really appreciate it. I knew it was going to be fun. <laughs> well, this is yeah. always fun to do and, and another great conversation. I yep. appreciate you coming on. Well, thanks and so if, much. And if you're ever back in the Telema area, feel free to come by. We'll, we'll do an in-person. We'll do there. Okay. We'll, we'll do, we'll we'll do, do it. Another, we'll do part two. So uh, There's always more to talk about. That's Absolutely. I right. uh, hope we thank you so much for being on this episode of Two Mics and a Guest. We'll see you guys uh, next time.